Hi again. So I'm back here with my organ pipe robots. And some of you seem to like my more technical videos. So this is going to be one of those more technical videos. And the it's a little bit of a long story, but the short version is that I've been writing some kind of software whereby I can sing or play a guitar or play a musical instrument and the robots will listen to me and I want them to be able to kind of play along with me using some kind of artificial intelligence to figure out what I'm playing and to kind of figure out whether or not they should be, you know, what they should play at any given moment in time. Anyway, as part of that system, I need the robots to be able to filter out their own sound. So in other words, if this robot is listening through a microphone and I'm playing and it's playing, then it'll hear me and it'll hear itself kind of all combined together. And there are certain reasons why I need the robot to be able to kind of ignore its own sound so that it can just focus on my sound. And so I wrote a little script kind of that does that and it's that script that I'm going to show you today. So the first thing that I've done here is I've written a calibration script and the setup is that I have this uh, blue robot here listening through this microphone and this is an omnidirectional microphone so the robot should be able to kind of hear everything that's going on in the room more or less equally. And then, um, so the script, which I'm going to show you in just a moment, what it does is the robot will play each one of its notes in succession and it'll make like a two second recording of kind of the steady state phase of each note. And actually before it does that, it'll actually just make a two second recording of silence. Well, it's not really silent because, for instance, you have the sound of the air supply down here humming away. And you have whatever other kinds of ambient sounds are present in the room or whatever kind of noise is introduced by the recording setup, so really it's not recording silence, it's kind of recording the ambient noise in the room. And so I'm just going to run the script here. So this is a slight tangent, but these pipe organs were designed so that the organ pipes are removable, and in fact they're interchangeable, so I could just as well change the order of all of the organ pipes, and in fact if I set this up you know, somewhere other than this room, it's very likely that I will just haphazardly put all of the pipes into random locations. And so one of the things that my calibration script did when it ran is it actually figured out the MIDI note number of each pipe that it has. And this is my ground truth here. So you can see this robot has note number 74, 68, 63, 57, and so forth. And that should be exactly what's printed out here, 74, 68, 63, 57, and so forth. So now if I wanted to, I could just completely scramble the order of the pipes and then as long as I run this calibration script, the robot will know exactly which notes that it has. However, that's not the main thing that this calibration script does. As I said before, the main thing that it does is it records a little two second sample of each uh, organ pipe. And then later, because it always knows what notes it's playing, it can use those little recordings to kind of subtract out its own sound from whatever it hears through the microphone.
So now I want to show you a little bit how this works. As you can see, I'm sitting in front of the microphone and talking, and the robot is also playing some notes. And the notes are quite loud. In fact, it's really difficult to hear myself talking because the robot is so loud. But since the robot knows which notes it's playing at every given moment in time, and because it knows exactly what each note sounds like through this microphone given this setup, then it should be able to subtract out its own sound so that it just hears me. And so this is what that sounds like. As you can see, I'm sitting in front of the microphone and talking, and the robot is also playing some notes. And the notes are quite loud. In fact, it's really difficult to hear myself. So as you can hear, that filters out most of the sound of the organ pipe, although you can still kind of hear the pipes in the background. And so it's one thing to hear what it sounds like, but it's also nice to be able to see a graph of what's going on. And so in order to make a nice graph, what I'm going to do is play one note on the guitar into the microphone. And first I'll do that while the organ pipe is playing, and then I'll do it a second time while the organ pipe isn't playing. So this is how that goes. So from there, it's basically just FFT madness. So each one of these plots is basically the spectrum of some particular sound. It tells you what frequencies are present in that sound. And so this one right here is the spectrum of from when I played the one note on the guitar together with the organ pipe. And I think you remember what that sounds like. And if you really want to deconstruct this, what it is is kind of a combination of the sound of the organ pipe by itself plus the sound of the guitar by itself, plus the sound of the ambient background noise. And even though all these three things are playing simultaneously, they basically just combine together linearly by adding together to create this composite sound that you actually hear. And you can see the most salient thing in this particular spectrum is this big spike at 415 hertz. And in fact, that spike is basically just the sound of the organ pipe. And it's interesting to note that even though the guitar is much closer to the microphone than the organ was, still the organ pipe is like a laser beam on this one particular frequency. Uh, so that sound still comes through very strong. However, since all of these different sounds basically just add together, and since I know what the organ pipe sounds like, and since I know what the noise sounds like, since I made little recordings of them when I ran my calibration script, I can basically just subtract those back out, and I should be left with just the sound of the guitar. So just as with the voice, you can hear that there is still a little bit of organ pipe sound present in the background. But by looking at this plot, you can see that this huge 415 hertz spike has actually more or less completely disappeared. So what's left of it is just very, very small. And in fact, this reconstructed guitar sound, the spectrum, is actually very close to the spectrum that I got when I just played the guitar by itself without the organ pipe. And just so you can see this a little bit more clearly, I subtracted the one on the left from the one on the right, and I ended up with this plot, which is basically kind of the error between the two. You know, if, if the one on the right and the one on the left were exactly identical, then this plot would just be zero everywhere. But since it has little peaks and valleys, you can see that my reconstructed guitar sound may be subtracted out too much sound in certain areas and maybe not enough sound in other areas. But still, it's very close to the original guitar sound, and I'm hoping that it's close enough that I can kind of feed this audio into my other algorithms and that my other algorithms will behave the way that I want them to. Okay, so that's all I want to say about my robots for now. 
but I want to go on one more brief tangent that has to do with kind of a different way that you can use the spectrum of these two second organ pipe recordings to do some kind of filtering. And so a couple of years ago, I wrote this web page which generates artisanal noise for noise hipsters. And the way this works is you can upload a sound and this uh, website will search for the quietest segment within that recording and it'll take the spectrum of that and use that to filter white noise. So then you end up generating kind of more sound that sounds like whatever the quietest part of that recording is. And so um, if I upload one of my two second organ pipe recordings, then I can actually use this to generate more organ pipe sound. And as you can hear, that's not a bad way of synthesizing something that sounds similar to my pipe organ. So I don't know if there's interest, maybe at some time I'll develop this a little bit further to make an actual proper organ pipe synthesizer based on the sound of the organ pipes that I made. Um, but anyway, yeah, so that's all I have to say for now. So that's it. And I guess I'll see you next time as usual.